to the red couch. I do my best. I didn't say, hey, what's up today? I'm hanging out with Don Chips. Ah. <laughs> In Bay. What's up? Yeah. The boys call him Don Chips. Yeah. Opere, opere. Two piece. Opere, two piece. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I couldn't resist. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I heard you guys had a gig last night. I'm tired. I'm actually. I just actually woke up like when two you, hours before I got you. When do rappers sleep better? Like you guys gig, then you record at night, then you do interviews during the day, and then you know. We find we find hours in between there, you know, to get a little nap, you know, and then we wake up and we get back to. Do work. you guys eat healthy? Do you eat healthy? We didn't. We don't. This morning I ate a spot from the MPL oh, actually. No. Yeah, so we didn't Sounds even have like proper breakfast. Yeah. It's rough. You know. so it's gonna catch up with me during the day, but it's cool. It's gonna catch up with you when you're mm. sixty. <laughs> Trust. I'm not trying to convert you or anything <laughs> like that. But um the music, the music, the music, the music. Yeah. First of all, your album's been coming for like For years 10 and years, years now. yeah, yeah, for years and years though. What's, what's going on there? I think a lot has been happening, Press, you know. Um, in between car accidents, in between just being sad for a while as well, depression and stuff. Um, and also just trying to find my own sound, you know. I think what I had recorded before with what was 7.30 at that point in time was an album that was not actually about me. You know, it was just about pleasing the people that think they can rap. So I had a big problem with that when I listened to the project because I thought, hey, this doesn't resemble anything about me, you know? And I felt like that was a big problem. So I went back into the stew and I really wanted to give people who Envey is, this is going to be my first offering. And I wanted people to sort of get an idea of the kind of person I am, you know, sort of like a little manual to knowing who Envey is. And um, I wouldn't have achieved that with what I had recorded before. You know, so I felt like what I have now is like a best representation of me. So, yeah. so, so we have an album. We, we yeah, we do. Oh no, the album, the album, the album is okay. is done. Yeah, yeah, it's done. We're speaking right now. It's in the mixing process and mastering. So, so it's dropping this year. Hopefully. Oh wow. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I mean, do you have a title? I mean, because you've been Mr. Seven Thirty for all our lives. Yeah, we changed the title, but Obviously, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready to to tell you guys the title right yeah. now. Um, I think. Uh, once everything is concluded with my team, once we get the release dates and everything, then I can release the album title. But it's no longer called 730. No longer. I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, that we finally have something, you know, yeah. rolling with that. So, big up. We've been waiting for so long. Yeah, no, man. I hope it's all new music. I don't want to hear your singles on the album, please. Well, I think you'll get the, the stuff that I released this year will be on the album. Okay. Yeah, so I think you'll get Dinner Boom will be on the album, obviously. But I don't think the stuff like Mochiko and stuff will be on the album. I don't think mm -hmm. that stuff will be on the album. It's just going to be new singles. Let's backtrack a bit. You said you went sad, you went depressed. What was happening there? I think it was after a lot of things had happened. You know, I lost people who were close to me. The car accidents as well. Like, they happened in like back-to-back -back years. Mm -hmm. I mean, in 2009 and 2010. My situation as well with Roshink at that point in time. So it was just, there was just too much for me and I just couldn't take it. It also just took the drive away from me. I just didn't want to record as well. I was a bit, I was a bit messed up, you know. Yeah. So I finally found my voice again and I became a bit more confident as well. So the music, the music never stops. The music is there, you know. I just feel like I'm in a better space right now than I've ever been. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dependent on myself as opposed to being dependent on other people and well as well to help me out with whatever you know so right now i feel like i'm good I'm that, good. that makes me happy um i wanted you to to just take me to that because it was brought to our attention i think last week that um you know artists well i mean a lot of people go through depression and they don't talk yeah. about it we just keep yeah. it moving and as an artist i can imagine how straining your career or your life sure. already is and you know the, the complications of being depressed. Like, how do you overcome that? Firstly, as a as a black guy. Yeah. Secondly, as an artist. I mean, it takes away from your creativity. How how do you work around all that stuff? Because obviously you slack. You yeah. don't record. True. Maybe if you have a feature or something like that, you the obviously don't, you don't obviously show dope. up. Yeah. Video shoots. You don't do that. I yeah. mean, how are the how are the the people around you or life around you? Because you go into a hole. Yeah. How how is life around you and your people? You know, understanding of what you're going through, how open were you I in terms of what you're going through? I was more through? open with my friends than I was with my family at that point in time, you know. Tepi, P.O., Black Les, you know, they're the support structure that I had at that point in time. So they 
they, they, they kind of motivated me to getting back to the zone that I'm in right now, you know. They played a huge part in this album as well happening. They, they, they supported, they helped with everything that they had, you know. So it kind of, I also fed off the energy that they had because I mean, they're positive dudes, they're happy, you know, they've been working on their albums, I listen to their stuff and I'm thinking, yo, I'm slacking. And they don't even say, ah, they always try and help, you know. So I think that's what brought me back to being me again, you know, being happy again and just being, feeling confident with music as well, you know. I think the boys, the boys played a huge role, you know. My family sort of like picked it up with the accidents, but I think it was one of those that I can see my not you know. Yeah, yeah. But my friends, my friends really took the strain and, but they helped, you know, they helped a lot. Yes. Yeah. Look, we're in a better place now. I'm happy, man. I'm hey, good. Hey, we're doing the most. I'm good. I'm we good. took out some other fire songs. Oh, Danny Boom, bro. What happened? Like, <laughs> someone pissed you off. Like, what? We think it's a rapper. Demon, it's a monster. No, <laughs> I was, I was, I was, a lot of things were happening when I, I released Danny Boom. But it was funny because, um, no, 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 him, him, obviously, you know, a lot of people thinking that no, but Envy kind of fell off a little bit with the yeah. pen, you know. It, it wasn't an issue of me falling off with the pen. I was just trying to do different things, you know, and explore different sounds as well. Why and don't people ever get that? Like I think that people, when, once, once they put like a label on you, they don't want you to change. They, mm. they want you to be that guy. So I'll always be known as Envy, the guy with punchlines. Right? They'd never want me to try out something more musical and they don't even know that I'm a musical guy. It's just mm. that they got this from me and then they start thinking, okay, this is who he is. And that's a big problem for me because I want to explore, I want to I wanna learn a lot. I want to tap into different genres and, you know, see if I can mix it with what I have. And yeah, man, I felt like at that point in time, I had a conversation with Beat Muchini and he was saying to me, oh man, let's rap, you know. Let's rap, and I said to him, oh, give me a beat, and he sent the beat, I think two days from there on it was done. You. Yeah, two days from there it was done, I and was we gave fired. out the And I didn't want to release it as a single, as Peter always actually said. We actually said, yo, release it as a single. I was like, I can't, yeah. can't be a single. So I was like, no, let's go. You know, because it was, it was around September, so people yeah. were releasing the summer kind of songs, and I was like, I need a summer song. I was like, nah, I'll release this joint. And it happened to do what it did, so I'm, I'm happy, you know. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure people right now can attest to the fact that I'm top five. <laughs> Ooh, dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> Always a conversation. That, you know, Who's in you know. your top five? It's going to be biased, my top five. Like, obviously, you know, it's going to be yeah, biased. So, yeah. you're going to have P.O. in there, Black Les in there. I think Kittini just made it in there. Oh, okay. You know, just Who did you made kick out? Because, I mean, obviously, somebody had to get yeah, off. Well, I kicked Kittini. out a few, man. Yeah. I don't care about the rest. My team's the dopest. Yeah. Give <laughs> me three it. people P.O., Black Les, Kittini. I still rate mugs, and let's give the fifth one to Reason. I, I, let's sorry, give the fifth sorry. one to Reason. Yeah. The night is young. That's the group. What's going on? Boys to boys to boys to five men. <laughs> yeah. What's going on there? Because I, I mean, also Kitini just got signed to Ambitious. So yeah, that's what, a little bro, So what's man. gonna happen to the, the group dynamic? Like, I mean, what's the night is young? The night is young is not even a group per se, man. It's a movement, you know, of just individuals. Um, trying to come through as a collective and bring out more music. So within this movement, the individuals obviously have to do their own thing as yeah. well, you know, to also keep the Night is Young brand flourishing. Kittini's situation, he's still part of the Night is Young, you know. Congrats to him with the signing, you know. I think it's going to do big things for him. I think the boy deserves it. He's such a hard worker. Yeah. But it's not going to change anything, you know. The dynamics are still the same, you know. We're still going to record music. We're still going to work. You know, that's little bro right there, you know. And the mere fact that he adds, he adds like an important, I don't, I don't know even how to put it, he adds like flavor, flavor, yeah, like yeah. a new flavor to the group that no one else in the group can bring, you know. It's so, it's, that's, that's what also, uh, what, that's what's so detrimental as well to, to the group. We can't, we, can't, we can't afford to lose him as a member, you know. So we managed to sort of like sort things out with whatever the situation was with Ambitious, you know. Yeah, but he's still, he's still, he's still, he's still part of the group. Do you think, do you think talent in, in Cap City is like, or new talent is like slowing down or dying out? Like, you know, back in 2000, 2009, 10, man, like people were just popping and people were coming True. up, whether it be dancers, the rap scene was crazy, the ciphers, whatever, of they did, when you were on and whatnot. Yeah. And now it's like, it's, when we say Cap City, we're talking about you guys yeah. and, and a few other people, you know. Do you, do you think Cap City new talent is falling off or 
is that whole Arab Cap City thing also slowing down? If people are no longer so much about standing up for, for Cap City or being Cap City, I don't know, what do you think? I think the talent is there. The talent is there, but I just think the guys are going about it the wrong way, you know, trying to do, uh, or trying to represent the city. I think they're going about it the wrong way, you know. I always feel like there's a certain way uh, the Pretorians will accept you. There's a certain way you need to do things. There's a certain way you need to behave as well. Like what? You know, I, sh I just think Pretoria like... Pretoria is so... You, you, I just Pretoria think, is so strict, man. It is. I mean, we're territorial. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why anybody will tell you if you kill a crowd in Pretoria, you can win anywhere in the world. Because we have such a tough crowd. Like, if you perform in Pretoria really and you kill it, you win, Major. You yeah. know? I just feel like um, the talent for Pretoria... <laughs> It thing, man, but it's also there's there's a level of complacency with a lot of these kids as well that are coming up. You know, I can't be at the stage in my career right now, and whenever they think Cap City, they still refer to myself, Blacklist, mm. P.O.O. Uh, you know, there, there needs to be young blood that's coming out of the city. You know, and we've opened up the gates this year to say, listen, if anyone wants to work, we're keen to work. Just contact us. If you dope, we'll do it. You know what I mean? So I'm glad, like your. A Reese's are coming out as well, the mm. benchmarks are coming out as mm. well, you know, at least there's, there's something outside just Majitaru yeah. Nafela, you know, so I just think that they need to just go about it the right way, man, hustle harder, don't expect favors because there's this new mentality now, you know, you need to sort of grind it out, work hard, you know, and I'll, re I'll recognize that myself and I'll help you as well where I can and you can help me. You know, you can't just sit there and send me an inbox and say, I'm there, can rap, come help me. It's not going to work out. You're never going to leave PTA? Yep. Why? I love Pretoria. I think, you know, being born there and raised there and everything is, has also just <laughs> made it hard for me to sort of see any other place as dope. You know, I relate so much with what's happening in the city. I love the pace. Yeah, thing. It's not as fast. It's not as slow as well. It's just like Mohari Ishaku. You know, and it's a beautiful place to be in, and it's, I'm very comfortable there. You know. My kids are going to be raised there as well, so it's cool. It can be said that you could have you could have blown up earlier. Yeah. You could be bigger than you than you, I mean, you should be bigger than you are now. Yeah. Do you think being in Pretoria has anything to do with that, or would it be like some of the challenges that you've gone through, like on your way to where you are now? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't necessarily think because I'm in Pretoria, it's sort of like restricted my mm. my uh boom yeah, yeah. if people could say uh i've always believed as well pressure i serve a certain niche i'm not mainstream as people would like to believe you know i'm i'm a guy who serves a certain niche and i want to grow that niche i know it's going to take years and years but um it's a project that i'm embarking on and i feel I'm comfortable with that. I'm in a stage right now in my career where I don't want to force to do things out of the sake of blowing up. I, I really like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a stage where I'm comfortable. I make music for the people that want to hear Inve's music. Whether I get two or whether I get three or whatever mm. it is, there's just somebody out there who's willing to say, yo, Inve, when is the next joint coming? You know, and I believe in that because that's a loyal fan base as opposed to just a, oh, Inve is hot today. Ah, I'll sign a remit. Oh, P.O. is hot today. We on this bandwagon. I just, I'm trying to build like a, a following, a cult following of people who really believe in NVA.